These are the top five skills that employers are actually hiring for. If you're trying to break into cybersecurity and don't know exactly what skills to focus on learning, this video is for you. The first thing I want to call out is the fact that a lot of the skills that we're using in today's job market are going to be vastly different from the skills that we need in 10, 20, even 50 years. If you guys haven't seen a lot of entry-level work, like reviewing logs, reviewing alerts, typical SOC work, which also happen to be some of the most entry-level roles in cybersecurity, are being replaced by AI. And I have many videos on my channel on what is going to be replaced by AI and what isn't, but the best way to future-proof yourself and make sure that you are hireable in the next 5, 10, 15 years is by actually learning future-proof cybersecurity skills. And no, cybersecurity is not going anywhere as a sector. It was listed as the number two fastest growing skill in the World Economic Forum's latest Future of Jobs report, but the specific skills that you learn are going to make the biggest difference on your career. So let's get started. Skill number one that you should learn is AI and security automation. This means understanding how cybersecurity teams are using AI to automate parts of their cybersecurity processes and how AI is helping them detect, analyze, and respond to cybersecurity threats. And again, I know there's a lot of talk about AI replacing jobs, but it's more so the fact that AI is replacing parts of your job that you probably didn't want to do anyway that can be automated away, and then focusing your time on the more important projects that still need to be worked on. And as someone who has previously worked on the blue team side, the red team side, and GRC, there's never a lack of projects to work on. So just incorporating AI into your workflow does not mean that your role on the team is going to be obsolete. One of the big trends I've been seeing is using AI in SOC environments. SOCs or security operation centers are increasingly integrating AI to handle vast amounts of security data. Depending on the size of your company, your infrastructure and the amount of data that your company generates and the amount of alerts that are generated from this data can be a lot. But the biggest areas that AI is being incorporated is within threat detection where an AI will analyze any logs or network activity to identify anomalies faster than a typical person would. Number two, incident prioritization. This means also using AI to rank different threats and alerts based on their risk level or their severity level, which can also help reduce alert fatigue for the actual SOC analyst that will be digging into these alerts. And then of course, number three is automated investigations. AI can help SOC analysts correlate data across multiple different platforms and data sources to detect any potential attack patterns, which means by the time that alert reaches an SOC analyst, there could already have been some work or pre-investigation that the AI tool has already done for them. So it makes their job easier and hopefully faster to be able to just dive right into the logs that the AI comb through rather than having Having to go into the seam and look for them yourself. So this means for you as a beginner is to get very, very familiar with how an SOC works, how an SIEM works. You can actually set up your own SOC home lab. You can set up your own SIEM using open source tools for free on the internet. I have a video on how to build your own home lab. I'll link that in my description. But all these skills are things that you can learn on your own. And of course, doing that even faster by picking up or learning common scripting languages like Python or PowerShell. JavaScript is another one I highly recommend learning if you're interested in Red Team specifically. And getting familiar with SOAR or security orchestration automation and response tools and the different AI enhancements that are being made to those tools. Skill number two you should be focusing on is security auditing and a GRC. I'm sure you guys are tired of hearing me talk about this because I personally do think that GRC is one of the big areas to go into in cybersecurity, especially with the advancements in AI. Who is going to be creating the regulations around using this AI, around training this AI, the compliance requirements, around integrating AI technologies into widely used software and platforms, as well as, of course, more and more companies just coming online because of the accessibility of technology that AI is creating. This means that a company that originally may not have access to direct talent for a software engineer to be able to build a website or an application now has AI right at their fingertips for very low price or even free in a lot of cases to be able to build up your own applications from scratch. But this also creates a much bigger surface area for cyber attacks, for ransomware attacks, for DDoS, for phishing and social engineering attacks. But once these companies are up and running and looking for customers, their customers are going to want to know if they're ISO 27001 compliant, if they have their SOC 2, if they're GDPR compliant and any other more sector-focused compliance requirements like HIPAA, TSACs, or PCI. And with AI technology enabling more companies to come online and create new businesses, this also means that there's going to be a lot more demand for GRC professionals and security auditors to actually audit their security processes, their technologies, their infrastructure that they have in place to make sure that they're keeping their data, users, and employees secure. So personally, I may be a little bit biased, but I do think that GRC is going to be huge in the next five to 10 years. All right, skill number three is zero trust and endpoint protection. So something else you need to keep in mind is how traditional network perimeters are disappearing, which means cybersecurity teams have to think about zero trust and how to implement it within their organizations. So what exactly is zero trust? Zero trust is a security strategy that assumes all users and devices are untrusted by default. 
Gone are the days that you log in once to your work laptop, and then from then on, you're authenticated to use any application or, or have access to admin level privileges. This means that users are only given the least privilege that they need to do their jobs and nothing more. There's continuous verification of who users are and validation that they're able to access certain tools, applications, data, etc. However, zero trust by default is very difficult to implement because of the sheer number of controls and mitigations that need to be in place for it to work. And this is where Threat Locker comes in, who is also sponsoring this portion of the video. Threat Locker is a zero trust endpoint protection platform designed to protect organizations from cyber threats like malware, ransomware, and unauthorized applications. It uses application control, ring fencing, storage control, elevation control, and more to enforce security policies and prevent cyber attacks. This means if an attacker gets into an employee's system, they won't be able to run any suspicious applications because they're not enabled to run by default because apps need to be on an allow list to be able to run. And this also means if an employee opens a phishing link and downloads a suspicious doc file, Threat Locker uses ring fencing to make sure that file won't be able to open or interact with the terminal. This basically makes it so that it never gets exploited in the first place. You can even use elevation control to elevate privileges only for when an application is updating. And even better, you can prevent applications from interacting with other apps while it's at an admin level state. For example, preventing Microsoft Word from launching PowerShell can block potential malware or suspicious apps from running. Not to mention that learning mode makes it even easier to set up by automatically building application control policies based on what's running in your environment. You can just review and approve, making it easy to lock things down without breaking your workflow. This control granularity is exactly what makes Threat Locker and Zero Trust Security in general so powerful. You can stop cyber attacks before they even happen and prevent attackers from elevating their privileges or moving laterally within a network with just having these controls in place. If you're interested in Zero Trust Security and focusing on this cyber niche, I'd highly recommend checking out Threat Locker's free Zero Trust training on their Threat Locker University. They'll teach you all the basics and you can also get an idea of the real world technical tools that companies are actually using to defend against cyber attacks and secure their devices. You can learn more about Threat Locker and check out their free training linked in my description. All right, skill number four on this list is cloud security. Now I did recently share a full career roadmap for a cloud security analyst if you're interested in checking that out, but cloud is another one of the really big areas that are growing alongside the adoption of AI because firstly, if you think about it, more companies are coming online and running your servers on a physical data center is very expensive, very hard to maintain. So the best and cheaper and also scalable alternative is the cloud. And personally, if you're just starting out, I would recommend just taking a free training from one of the big cloud providers out there. I've listed all the links to the trainings in that video, but most of the big cloud providers all have free training that you can take. And some of them also have a discounted or free environment that you can use to spin up your own cloud environment and get hands-on training to be able to learn cloud native security tools. And on top of this, also digging into container security with Docker or Kubernetes is another great way to get really hands-on with technology that companies are actively using to stay secure while also being scalable and efficient. Another great place to start is learning the cloud security frameworks like CIS or just the NIST framework. And that'll also give you a deeper understanding of cloud security and how to protect assets, data, users, and applications within the cloud. And last but not least, skill number five on this list is ethical hacking and pen testing. Okay, so personally, I don't think that human ethical hackers are going anywhere anytime soon. Especially if you've seen the things that red teamers can do, that is just not something that AI can replace at this time. That's my personal opinion, but I know others in the sector who also have this opinion, but I would love to hear what you guys think about this in the comments below. Of course, things like vulnerability scanners or for automated pen test scans have always been around. And of course, with AI, they're going to be enhanced. But personally, there's no way to really replace a human pen tester that can be a lot more creative with the way that they do things, especially when you're talking about a red team assessment, not just a typical web application pen test. So now it is not too late to become a pen tester or an ethical hacker if you're someone who is interested in red teaming, learning about the MITRE attack framework, social engineering attacks like phishing, different suites of pen testing tools, and getting familiar with different operating systems like Linux can be really helpful if you're someone who is just starting out. And of course, general scripting is going to be really helpful as well. But there are a lot of skills that you can start with learning as an ethical hacker. I'd recommend just starting out, spinning up your own VM and setting up Kali Linux on your machine. It comes with a huge list of pre-built-in cybersecurity ethical hacking tools that you can use and test around with. And you can also use a website called CTF Time, which gives you the list of upcoming CTFs or capture the flags, which are basically timed hacking challenges and you can join solo or as a team. Of course, platforms like Try Hack Me and Hack the Box also have great training that are CTF style rooms where you can also get hands-on training. But the best way to become a pen tester is to just get hands-on experience hacking things legally. So I'd highly recommend going to ctftime.org and finding a CTF that is coming up where you can get some hands-on practice 
after doing some training on different hacking platforms. All right, that is it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. Hopefully this video was helpful and I would love to hear your thoughts on this, especially for where the future of cybersecurity is going and the actual skills that hiring managers are looking for in their job candidates. Don't forget to also check out ThreatLocker University for free zero trust training. This is a great skill to add onto your resume and for a future project that you may work on because this is something that is definitely top of mind for cybersecurity teams out there. And I'll have that training linked in my description below. Don't forget to also stay connected on LinkedIn, Discord, Instagram, also a link in my description. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe as it really does help out the channel. I post videos weekly and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!